In our last um, meeting on Friday, when we hacked on the React Kindling project a little bit, uh, we talked about the debugger just briefly. Um, and I think there might have been a little bit of confusion about how it works. So I wanted to talk about the node debugger and uh, just show that off really quick. So um, when you use the debugger, you won't be able to just drop into the project and type gulp to start up the node server and the webpack server. Instead, you're going to have to start each one individually. Uh, and the way that you'll do that is you'll drop into the project and then you type node debug and then server.js, and that'll start up the node server in debug mode. Um, now, the first thing that's gonna happen is it's going to stop. Like, it'll start running your code and stop on line one. And this will give you a chance to set breakpoints. Uh, most of the time, I find it easier just to go into your code and type debugger, uh, so that's how I do it. So this, I just hit continue. So C is for continue, and that means now you're uh, node server is listening for requests. So now if I visit my application, it should load up. Uh, one other quick note, since it does use the Webpack hot reload server, you have to start that up and you just type gulp serve colon Webpack. I've refactored a little bit of the project, one to make it work with node 12 and two to simplify um, the gulp file a little bit. Uh, and so it, it used to be gulp serve hot, now it's gulp serve webpack because we're actually using the webpack server and that made more sense in terms of naming convention. Okay. So um, now let's go and add uh, a breakpoint in the into the code. It's actually already there, but I'll show you where it's at. So what we're gonna do is test the login so we need to be able to make sure that the request user has a value. Uh, on the first run, it's not going to have one, so the debugger isn't going to fire. And that's just because I got tired of it, of having to hit continue every time I refresh the page. But now, if, it, if a user exists inside of the session, we're going to hit this debug breakpoint, and then we can take a look around and explore what that user looks like a little bit. Um, on a side note, uh, James helped me get this working on Friday. Uh, we were able to figure out why the sessions were not functioning correctly, and they are now functioning correctly, um, which goes into a deeper issue with uh, Express, which is if you look in the last commit for server JS, the load order is really important. And basically, we were loading up these controllers before initializing the session. Um, and that will cause you a lot of a lot of headache. Uh, well, setting up the routes with the controllers. So I've separated that out so the controllers are loaded separate from the routes and now everything's functioning correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and log into our app using Twitter. This will use OAuth to go out and request some information from Twitter. Uh, it's going to be like a display name and a, a login, well, an authentication token that lets me access the API on behalf of this user. So when I hit sign in, we're going to get stuck on the redirect right here, and that's because we've hit our breakpoint. So if I go to the command line, you can see that we've stopped where I type debugger. Now, in order to interact with the code, you have to type REPL, REPL. Now that I've done that, I can take a look at the request user object. And you can see it's got all kinds of information. There's my token, so I'm gonna have to go out and reset my token. Um, here's a username and a display name. So I can go request.user. Uh, Twitter, and that will give me the information just, let's see, I believe that will give me the information just from the Twitter account. Let's try it. Twitter display. There. So now I have a display name that I could write into the page and you know, I could say welcome Justin Ball. Uh, so all of this data is getting stored off into Mongo when we authenticate via OAuth. 
and and you can access it and make the user experience customizable. Maybe we use the access token to uh, talk to the Twitter API on behalf of the user. So to get back out of the debugger, so if I hit C right here, it's just going to say C is not defined because it thinks C is a variable. Uh, you actually have to hit Control C. That takes me out of the out of REPL and makes it so I can continue to do things like next. So N, it will step one step at a time. S will step into. So you can see I've just stepped into document.js, which is actually not anywhere I really want to be. Um, I can't remember if you will step up. It, no, let's see. You can type help anytime and get different commands. Uh, looks like maybe out, the step back out. That's what, what it is. Uh, so you have the, these different commands available to you. If you're done with the breakpoint, you can just hit continue, and it will. Looks like you're too slow, so request timed out. But hitting continue will just continue the request. So if I do it more quickly this time, refresh, just hit continue. Now you can see that the page has loaded. You inspect the source. I've dumped the user's display name into the top of the page, and so you can see that right here. And I just did that um, right here. I dumped the user display name that I built up here, and then in index.js, I just 